Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pro Pokeball Season 4, Week 4. My name is Pro Pokemon. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Tonight, there's going to be a few changes. First of all, you will not have me on camera. I am very much out of commission to be on a camera right now. So everything will be done without face tonight. No big deal. Also, we're going to have a slight change in schedule and a couple of announcements just to show you guys some things that is going on in the channel beyond the battles. One of them being the standings. The other one being, let's take a look at... Who's doing well in the new bits support? But first things first, we have to take a look at how the stands are looking with... Sarasota Suicune is dropping their first game last week. We now have only a two-way tie for first place. W. Wellington and the P2 Warriors. The Sarasota Suicunes now are in third with seven points. The Alaskan Raccoonids in fourth with sixth. Fifth place being held by the Stockton Thunderous with three. Okeechobee Toros and the Boston Baratics both sitting in that playoff final seed with two points apiece. And the Sock Powered Sky Sharks, the QB Destroyers, and Atlanta Kilo Conquerors all holding a single point and a single dream to hope to grab more in the future weeks. Let's take a look at week's four battles. This week there will only be four battles going on as the Sock Powered Sky Sharks and Lana Kilo Conquerors will be postponed until week five. It has already been decided upon. We have a rule basically if things need to be postponed and both coaches are in agreement, we will do it especially when both are out of commission for the particular week. No big deal. But we will be starting with the Boston Baratics versus the QB Destroyers, followed up by the Pichu Warriors versus the Stockton Thunderous. Then it will be the Alaskan Arachnids versus the Okeechobee Toros, and the last match of the night will be the Sarasota Suicunes versus W. Wellington. Now, that's one thing, but let's take a look at how the fans are feeling about these players. That's not the way we're going to do it. We're going to do it like this. You're going to have a big red box on your screen. No big deal. What the hell? You know, I don't know why it does that, but it does it. Here we go. So far, we were to take a look at the Nubit support towards the MVP award at the end. The Sarasota Suicunes are actually leading with a whopping 1,700 points with the Stockton Thunderous and Pichu Warriors close behind. A couple of teams without the support right now, but this is all public information if you want to see it at the bottom of the channel. You can also see it on the Discord in the Pro Pokeball section. Basically, you put in your Nubis through the Twitch extension to the bottom right hand of the corner. If you want to support your favorite teams, your favorite coaches, or your favorite plays of the match, make sure you put those in. They get, re, uh, they get redeemed at the end of every stream, and you can only do this on the Wednesdays of the Pro Pokeball matches. So make sure you get those in. The winner will be announced for the MVP award at the end of the playoffs because I realized I made a mistake. Why would I not let you guys throw in your Nubit support to players that are in the playoffs? That's just silly. So we will be announcing it not at the beginning, but at the end of the playoffs. I once again want to thank each and every one of you for showing up to the Pro Pokeball week by week. It is a great honor to do this for you, and it is my way to give back to the community for people to have fun with their Pokemon battles. 8th grade anime club. <laughs> it should be there now, Project. I would say reset, because I forgot to turn it on. Um, I forgot to turn it on before stream started, so if you need to refresh the screen or refresh your video play or your video extension, it should be there. At the same time... Um, at the same time, it might turn on more for you guys later on in it. Noobits are just owned by showing up, Mitch. Just being here, it's a minute. It's a new bit per minute, as well as um, you can gamble away your Nubis to get some more. Now, we have to take a look at three substitutions that also happened this week. First things first, we actually do see the QB Destroyers making their second trade of the tournament. We do see a Blossom being traded out for the Malamar. I actually kind of like this trade. I do think the Blossom was a bit of a hindrance towards the Destroyers, but nonetheless, I do think that Malamar is just a solid Pokemon. If you don't know what Malamar does, it gets the Contrary ability and happens to have the move Superpower. So Contrary reverses stat changes. So when... Superpower will be reducing your attack and defense by one. Malamar actually gets an attack and defense boost. Whether or not it'll help the synergy of his team, that's yet to be known. Especially if he's whether or not he's going to be playing it against tonight in the Bear Ticks. But uh, I do think it's a nice little bit of a powerhouse. It's a very neat Pokemon. It could definitely have some uses when going up against certain Pokemon. Especially in Mixed OU, you never know. It might get its it might get its single kill here or there. It might be able to tank a hit or two. Unfortunately, its typing is not very good defensively. It doesn't necessarily like to take hits. But find it in the right situation, Malamar can do a thing or two for you. Next up, we actually have the Lanakila Conquerors trading out the Kingdra in exchange 
for a Clawitzer. Now, this one was a very interesting trade to me. I actually thought that Kingdra was a very uh, decent Pokemon to him pick up. Deny it from the Alaskan Araquanids because, you know, we see that rain was a thing. And I actually liked the pickup at the time because also Critra is okay. With the nerfs to, well, the... <laughs> With the nerfs to the programming of how crits work in Gen 7 on Showdown, we saw Kingdra drop in value but stayed in RU in this tournament. Having said all of that, though, looking at the way that Icy like to play his teams, I actually think that Clawitzer might get more value out of the Kingdra, even though you might... You I would say that Kingdra is a better Pokemon because of the things that it can do. It can run its own Rain Dance set, it can be Critra, and have all these different things, you know, Double Dance, whatever the hell you want to do with it. Because he seems to be playing with very bulky Pokemon that are trying to be as offensive as possible, at the same time as using a couple of faster sweepers like Pidgeot or Diancie, try as best as he can, I think Clawitzer adds that water type that's going to be bulky enough, because Clawitzer gets Mega Launcher, which already boosts the attacks, on top of the fact that you can run it with something like Assault Vest, which is very popular, or you can run with Life Orb. Either way, I think that it makes it very effective for him to be able to make another bulky Pokemon work in his synergy. So I'm, I want to see what he means to use with this Clawitzer. Again, a bit of an odd trade, but nonetheless, he has made it, but I do think synergistically, it fits to the theme of what we've been seeing from Icy. And the last trade of week four will actually be from the Sarasota Suicunes. It was the Kling Clang out for your boy Stunfisk. Stunfisk getting static ability, also a nice Stealth Rock supporter. Actually, looking through his team, his only viable Stealth Rockers would either be the Registeel or the Azelf, but I didn't think that Azelf, most times we've been seeing it played offensively, so I don't think he's been necessarily favoring it. I think he may have used it once, like an offensive Stealth Rock set, but Stunfisk seems to give him the ground typing that he doesn't have to rely on Diggersby to offer him, but also... Maybe just another defensive Pokemon. It seemed really solid between his Registeel Suicune core, but this might be just one more Pokemon he can bring in against certain Pokemon to try and handle it out. The first thing that screams in my mind here is, well, I don't actually know because it's Stunfisk, but we have seen Mitch use it in the past, so it must be a good Pokemon, right? The new bits are found in the Twitch extension, uh, Koma, so if you see my face, just click on it at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And um, it should say the number of new bits at the bottom, along with all the redemptions. So, Of course, I leave it open for you guys on Wednesday, so if it takes until when I go offline, just put your supports in. Let's see if anyone's actually been doing it. Yep, somebody actually did it, so we're actually okay. Arctic something, thank you very much for the five bits, man. Appreciate the support. Thank you, Diego. I know I'm goddamn gorgeous. Anyways, let's get into our first match of the night between the Boston Bear Ticks and the Kyubi Destroyers. Both of these players are looking to get a little bit more points than they have right now, sitting at two and one point apiece, I believe. No, three and one point apiece. I'm an idiot, hold on. Two and one points apiece. They're both looking to take a win, and I think this is the week where we really look at the Kyubi Destroyers. I think darkness can start shining a little bit more, not feeling so lost in the dark, as you will. Because I think now that he has gotten pretty much the harder opponents out of the way, I still see him as being a mid-tier player. I think he can actually do quite a bit with his team. And the Boston Bear Ticks have shown a particular weakness in their defensive capabilities. We know that the Vigabolt's been run a little bit bulkier. Seismitone and Clefable, when taken down, suddenly turns Koma's team into a very fragile... Um... It's starting to show a bit of a fragile state with how the Pokemon are being handled. And really, it's the, it's the Infernape show. Once Infernape falls, it almost feels like if Koma's not set himself up to be good enough in taking down the opponent, I actually think that Koma's team just falls apart. So it makes me a little nervous. I think that it's still possible, though, for the QB Destroyers to... What the hell? To use a lot of his offensive Pokemon to get through that defense and actually make use of it. Believe it or not, I'm actually taking a look at that Yen, Mega, and Sinchino. I think that those two Pokemon can actually be fast enough to outspeed past the defensive capabilities of Koma. If those defense Pokemon are taken down, I think it's actually perfectly fine for the QB Destroyers to sweep in this particular match. But let's take a look at what's going to be going on here, guys, because we are getting into the first series of the night. Between the Boston Bear Ticks and the QB Destroyers. Let's get into it. It is going to be the Boston Bear Ticks on the close side, the QB Destroyers on the far side. Let's take a look at what they've got going on here. Uh oh, we're lagging a little bit already. That's kind of cool. E Are we actually lagging that hard? Wow. This is getting really bugged. Chrome 64 bug. It sucks. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Here we go. Let's take a look at the teams here. So, 
We do see that Infernape and the Scyther coming out. I think Scyther was actually a really good choice to put on the Boston Baratex now. It just seems to be working here. But it is going to be the Scyther Toad versus the Crobat that looks so freaking ugly. But it makes sure it runs perfectly. So the Crobat is going to be able to at least U-turn or just try and put some kind of pressure down here. If I take a look at the side of the QB Destroyers, I do see the Crobat, which was on my pokes to watch. I don't know, though, because... The Malamar is going to be very interesting. If it can get set up, it's still... What is it? Dark Psychic? So it's like super weak to bug. It might be able to... It's got to be careful with the Scyther around, but let's see. Take a look at the side. Infernape is really the only... Well, Infernape and Scyther, if those two are handled... Rhyperior kind of handles both of them, depending on what that Infernape tries to use. It can take up a hit and maybe just go for the Earthquake and just bring it down, basically dead. So I think... Uh, the win condition here is Beartix gets rid of the Rhyperior and then should have a decent time going through the rest of the team. Should. But we're going to see a Defog come out instantly before any hazards are actually used as an Ice Punch does come through. Ice Punch, physical? Seismitoad and a premature Defog. Okie dokie. Sky Attack is actually used. We've seen this multiple times. Run on the side of the QB Destroyers. Does a decent amount of damage, but this is a defensive Seismitoad. We've seen this run multiple times by Koma, so it's not going to be doing that much damage, but it does activate the Acrobatics. It's not too bad. Crobat's being kind of sacked off here, which I thought would be one of those better battles, or one of those better Pokemon against the side of Koma, but it is a lot of damage done to the Seismitoad, which could set up for something like Malamar in the future, or even Rhyperior, um... If he actually gets switched in and is able to do some damage here. But Tokus is going to come in and actually just straight sets up a nasty plot as Stealth Rock comes out. This is a... Uh, this is a better time for coming. Ice Punch is coming through as we actually see Air Slash come out and take down the size of Toad. Now I'm kind of curious as to how the... Interesting how I just noticed that that size of Toad is actually faster than Togekiss. Which means there have to be a lot of investment and in. There is... That's... That's... Okay. I'm confused. So if we're not running any speed in a nasty plot Togekiss, it does mean that this Rampardos does eventually outspeed. Maybe a Jolly Nature? Jolly Nature max speed, but it is Life Orb. Either way, the Rhyperior is going to come in now. We don't see that nasty plot doing a lot of damage. Most of the damage actually done by Koma's own head smash. As it is going to end up going for the Zen Headbutt. No Earthquake to be seen, but Megahorn actually misses when Earthquake could have been an easy thing here. Uh, could have predicted something like the Delmise coming in, so not necessarily the absolute worst play, although at this point, I think QB Destroyers could play pretty safe to just try and take this thing out. It is going to end up going for the Stone Edge, takes out the Rampardos, does the trick. But this right period was something that was stopping, depending on the variant of Infernape and the Scythe, from just basically going crazy in this match, as we do actually see a quick disconnect from the Bear Ticks. No big deal. They still have time to get back into this. If we take a look at the certain, if we take a look at the, uh, the current state of the battle, with that Rhyperior being weakened up, it actually means that Scyther can just basically even, I don't know if it, can, it could probably kill with a Bug Bite from that range, no problem. I think it'd maybe do like 30-40% to it, maybe, but Delphox, if it's not Scarf, will actually be outsped, although it needs to be weakened up a little bit with the, with the... Rocks and a Swords Dance, it would be taken out with Bug Bite. But either way, we do see the Infernape coming in now. This might reveal what we're going to expect from the Infernape. Uh, most likely close combat, maybe a Mach Punch. We've seen the Fake Out variant from Coma before. So let's see what she or he actually ends up. I'm never going to get used to that, am I? Let's see what we're going to be seeing coming out of this. As the close combat is actually going to be revealed, we do see a protect coming out from Rhyperior, so... Darkness just scouting. This would be a great time for the Crobat to be alive, but the Delphox is going to come in with the rocks. Close combat's going to do a sizable chunk, and unless this Delphox is scarfed, it is not, which means that this um, Infernape is going to end up going for the close combat. Now, I'm going to have to check something quickly after this match, because I think I actually see him... A misprint on the polka paste that I received. I actually do. I'm confused now. We'll deal with it after the match, but it's not supposed to be a life orb, which slightly surprises me, actually. So, uh, a bit of a misprint here, which we're gonna have to face in the end here, but nonetheless, we do see the, uh, we do see the Sylveon come in now. It is 4-3. It's looking a little bad for Darkness, but he still has a chance here. Maybe tank up the close combat. You sent two? You left me the wrong one then, Koma.
No, I think he sent me the exact same. Let's see. Yeah, no, the same ones. They didn't change the item on it. No problem, world leader. You got some time. But the but the second one also shows that it had a not a not life form. But either way, the hyper voice is gonna one shot. The taunt was a bit aggressive, but could just be an easy sack to try and get the Scyther in now. Scyther's got to be careful. This is going to hurt. The Hyper Voice will do a lot of damage. As that Bug Bite is resisted, Fairy does resist, and that's a hell of a lot of damage done. This could be Darkness's revenge, as I think, uh, yeah, Combs missed a bit of damage here. That Scyther is taken down. The Sweepers are gone. It is down to his Delmize and his Vicavolt. Malmar stands a chance? Maybe? Rhyperior is too weakened, though, so it might still be just all in vain. I think... Oh, never mind, we see a resto. Is this a resto chest? No, it is not, because we saw leftovers coming off of this thing. But it is going to be the, the uh, Volt Switch coming in here against the Delmize. Delmize will most likely have that anchor shot or anything like that. But Sleep Talks is going to hit it. The anchor shot does come through. It is going to take out the Sylveon, but it is important to get that much damage down, as it is going to be up to the Malamar to take it down from here. But it is a ghost type. He's got to be careful. He does have the dark move. doesn't have to go for the superpower. There's still a chance he could do this, but it doesn't matter. The power whip comes through. Is outsped yet again? As we actually just see a slow area from the QB destroyers with no speed EVs. And that's just going to be right here against the world. It's definitely going to be safe. It doesn't even take out the Delmize. And that is going to be game number one going over to the Boston Baratics. GG. No, they both have Choice Band Coma, so you're going to have to send me another one with the Life Orb, please. Just for the future, just so I can put it up officially. If you don't change it now, that's the one you're going to be stuck with. Hello. <laughs> Where are my teams? There they are. Well, definitely, definitely uh, slightly different from what I expected. The Choice, believe it or not, Choice Band versus the Life Orb actually may have helped a little bit there as... Um, would have made it more flexible if Koma had actually chosen to go for a different attack other than Taunt. But we did see Darkness actually stand a pretty good chance there. I like the play. Unfortunately, there seems to be this lack of speed that's been on his team comp lately. And it's just costing him a bit. Because I know for sure that Malamar is faster than a Delmize. Which really makes me question maybe if he's running something that's slowing it down on purpose. But nonetheless... Um, we did see that the setup from the Togekiss would have been pretty dastardly if he had gotten through with it. Same thing with that Sylveon doing a bunch of damage to the Bear Ticks. I actually really like that. I like that build a lot better from Darkness. I think that's honestly his best showing this season. That's a good thing because, like I said, it's really hard to show when you have people who just have team comps that basically just have the counters for you. But now these movesets are showing through and actually showing a good fight. So now... It's up to him to maybe play it out a little bit better in game number two. Where the hell is my... St Everything's breaking. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Everything is dying. Anyways. But that looked really good. And honestly, we did see a bit of a slip there from the Bear Ticks. Letting, Co get, letting Darkness get even closer to having the victory on that. Honestly, if he keeps his Rhyperior a little bit safer, he'll be able to tank up those hits and just threaten the kill, especially against that Rampardos if he plays it better around the Rampardos and just goes for the kill on it. That will basically just give Darkness so much more flexibility with that Rhyperior tanking up the hit. Will we see anything switch out, maybe for the Bear Ticks to handle that? We could see the Azumarill come in to try and handle that Rhyperior, but, um, you know, you still have to get through if the Crobat's kept alive. Because I know he brings Cross Poison on his Crobat, which would put a lot of damage down on that Azumarill. It depends on the build as well. But so far, I'm liking the builds between the two. So that should be very good for both of them to try and show something here as they get into game number two. Let's double check. Yeah, this is the one you want to send me, Koma. No problem. Thank you. Just don't change anything now, we're good to go. Also, world leader, no problem, man. You just gotta make sure you try and get here as soon as you can because you are up next. 
Just collecting a couple poke pastes here. And then we'll get right into game number two. I think Darkness could take game number two. I really do think that there was actually some brilliance in his movesets here. And just seeing the strength that he could do, I still question why there's no speed to help him with a couple of speed tiers. But definitely the Sylveon getting through and that Togekiss getting through too does put a lot of pressure on Koma to try and tank up these hits. And if he loses and doesn't bring that Clefable and loses the Seismitoad, Suddenly you see a lot of things, but I do like the Ice Punch for the Toga Kiss. I think that might be the reason why we don't see Ice Beam, but um, yeah, you saw like the moment that thing falls, the defensive capabilities of Koma, if he's not running Assault Vest on the Vicable, suddenly drops, and it's just lucky that it looked like that Delmice barely lived the, the Mega Horn, even though it was a little too late. But you know, you see that there are slips and lapses in the strengths of Koma's defensive core. Sorry about that, uh, Mitch. Diego, can you just drop it yourself for me, please? Instead of him dropping it. I do appreciate it. I have to... Maybe I can whitelist showdown battles. Maybe I'll have to do that. That would be the easiest way to do it, wouldn't it? But either way, it looks like we are into game... Number two. Coma up 1-0. Can we see him go 2-0 on the week, or will the Destroyers take the match and make it a 1-1 for himself? Oh, the, the regulars will do it? Okay, perfect. Hey, excellent, Suwako. Sounds good, man. Glad to hear it. So let's take a look. We actually see the Gudra, and we also see the Darmanitan coming out, so I'm liking this. That'll actually smash in that Vicable quite easily late game, so... I'm liking what the QB Destroyers are theorycrafting here, and on the other side, we see no changes, so I actually think the QB Destroyers came out with a stronger showing here, even the Sinchino showing it's a, making an appearance, and the Gujra, well, yeah, Gujra we already said. So, I actually think the Destroyers actually have the good team to try and take this on, especially if Koma makes that mistake again of letting that Sylveon do that damage. Now that we know it's a Life Orb Infernape, What's going to be happening with this? Because, let's see, Sinchino will be much faster. Darmanitan is a fast Pokemon. Gudra could take a lot of the hits. In fact, it could take the fire hits. It can take... It could just probably just take a hit or two from Scyther regardless. Takes it from Vicable. Takes the hit from... Like, Ice Punch is not going to do that much to a Gudra from the Seismitoad. Rampardos and Delmise will probably have the best bet against it. But Rampardos and Delmise don't have a good shot if it gets hit by anything else on the side of the QB Destroyers. This is cool. They may have left. Hold on. This might be the wrong battle. Let's see. Here we go! We're into it now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get you the real battle. Bam, we are in. We're still lagging with these things showing like this. Unfortunate. Oh, Chrome. Why you gotta do this? That sucks, man. Either way. Now take a look at team. I still like what the QB Destroyers have done with this. This looks very, very good. Um, how is this still the wrong one? What the hell? You guys only have one battle going right now. I am clicking the one battle you are in. This doesn't make sense. There's literally only one battle, and now there's no battle. So there we go. We're fine. We're good. You can see the glimpse of my face as I arm wrestle a sock. Look at the intensity in that mouth. The earbuds that I'm still using. <laughs> hey, we're into the battle. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Still liking what I'm seeing, though. <laughs> Regardless, I'm still liking it, except we actually do see a quick Pokemon change here. So no big deal. The Gudra will not be brought in. The Crobat remains. I still think...
No problem, uh, destroyers. Either way, let's see what he's actually got for this. So now, he still has the, he still has the Senshino on the team. I I don't like I like kind of like the uh, the Darmanitan better than the Delphox, especially since we saw the De Delphox did not take the hit well. But let's see if he can play it differently. It is going to be a Senshino versus the Seismic Toad Lee. Bullet Seed will basically force this out into either having to go into. Believe it or not, it's going to have to be the Delmize. It could take the Tail Slap. It could take a U-turn. Okay, Bullet Seed will not hurt. Rock Blast will be tanked up. So Delmize has to be the Switcher. Otherwise, the Destroyers just have the easy click here to try and take out that one defensive Pokemon that is generally going to be screwing over Koma. At the same time, we do actually see the Azumar making the shot, but it is going to be a straight bull seed hit. Oh, that over-the-top hit is going to mean that we see that one defensive Mon down. That better be a bulky Azumar, or this is already off to a great start for the QB Destroyers. The Crobat is going to come through. Close Combat is going to do nothing to this. This is good. This is much better from QB Destroyers. Now that he has this Crobat alive, he's going to have the Pokemon be able to take the hit. And now he can just basically threaten with a Brave Bird or Sky Attack to get his Acrobatics popped up here. So now that once he can do that, because the defensive Pokemon's gone, it's going to have to be Ramparos that comes in to take the Sky Attack. It's not the uh, bulkiest of Pokemon. It's just going to take just under half, but that's still a nice chunk to be given to it. Rhyperior is the easy switch as the Head Smash is going to be doing... Oh, wow, never mind. Almost next to nothing. Almost half to a Rhyperior. Not too bad, but now it's going to have to go for the Earthquake. Probably will not kill. This is the Zen Headbutt, though, as Stone Edge is going to be the safe play to make. The Rampardos was down. Now we see what happens when Koma starts losing the defensive Pokemon. There are no switches. It's kill or not. But that Azumarill is coming in for that right here as a Togekiss is going to make the switch. Ooh, Aqua Jet showing through. We don't see it. It could still be a Salt Vest, but... Um it is doing next to nothing, so that might feel, that might make the Destroyers feel comfortable here. Just to go for the attack. As Air Slash is used... Whoa! Okay, we see a Belly Drum. Azumar with the Citrus Berry. Not even the Agua Berry. Nothing like that. Straight up Belly Drum. Attempt to sweep here. It is going to take out the Togekiss. What does he have to take this hit? Actually nothing. That actually might just be GG. <laughs> maybe the Sylveon. Maybe, but it's looking like it's basically over. The setup is going to be clean. And with that, I don't think the Destroyers even saw that coming. I don't even think I saw that coming. Did not expect Azumarill to set up like this. Did I call it, though? I may have called it. I gotta check now. But either way, let's see if it can take the hit. It does not, and that's basically game. That's it. There is no stopping the belly. As this belly is just gonna roll through the Destroyers. What looked to be so good for Darkness, unfortunately is going to be crapped on by a water rabbit. The worst part about it is, too, is if he had any type of priority, it would basically handle it because Azumarill was brought this low, but it's just not going to matter. Straight Aqua Jet, straight GG. The Bear Ticks, showing game knowledge. Showing the 2-0. And you know, it's it's weird because you look at Darkness's team and you don't expect something like that to necessarily happen because of the Pokemon on his team. But it looks like so far it just seems to be bring a hyper carry and it's over. It's so weird. You don't hear about that very often. But that is going to be the case. But you know what? Kudos to Bertix to identifying that, right? Seeing that Azumarill just had an easy cleanup in, that, by the way, was planned. It was not a, a last-minute switch either. I made sure. But, yeah. But, yeah, you know what? If I look at the side of the Destroyers, Milotic would probably be the best in there. However, I don't blame him at all. I would not expect... I You know what? If I had taken more time, maybe I would have seen that Azumarill was the crusher against his team, but I don't think he actually expected it, and frankly, I don't blame him. I did call Azumarill, damn it. But with the Milotic, maybe if seeing that coming through would have mattered, could have taken the could have taken the hit. Would have needed to run some speed, though, to make sure they could try and get in there, maybe get the burn going. But the damage was good onto it. It just wasn't, unfortunately, the right Pokemon brought. And unfortunately, Koma is going to take the 2-0 for the Darkness, but I think it definitely showed more... 
confidence that Darkness is doing a lot better in the in this particular series, and which means I think um, I think that's good signs for the future. I really do think. Also, I now that I think about it, if Gudra did come in, Azuma would have trapped on it even more because of the play rough, and it would have been faster too. So good call on Darkness to not bring it and just have that Crobat remaining. So definitely showed up, but. I do think that, unfortunately, just because his team doesn't have something for a hyper carry, that's just going to be it. The Bear Ticks have Azumarill. So. Putting on a show with the Azumarill Belly Drum. We'll be back in a couple of minutes, ladies and gentlemen. If we don't see World Leader... Let's see. His computer is still going through something. If not, we'll have to go to the third match of the night, which would be... Oh, God. What would it be? It would be the Alaskan Raccoon. His Bedoodle is not here either, so we need to find some people. So let's take a couple of minutes, guys. We'll be back, and then we'll figure out which series is going to be going up next. You've been watching the Pro Bowl Season 4. BRB.
All right, we're back. Thank you very much for your patience, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Pokeball Season 4, Week Number 4. While we wait for everybody to kind of get their shit together, let's take a look at the standings. So, for people to understand, why is it doing this? How curious how it's facing the wrong one. Uh, other one. Thank you. Go. Ha. Huh? No? The hell? Why are you focusing on that one? Interesting. There we go. <laughs> that is... Very, very neato. Okay. No. Wrong one. Weird. Okay. That's something new. What if I click the other one? No? Okay. It's double reading the same frickin' one. How nice. One second. So, for those of you who are curious on how the playoffs are going to go, and based on the way that we calculate the points, the points are set up in a sense to actually give you guys enough of a chance to understand uh, that comebacks are real. It might not seem like it at first, but the points are designed so that people who are actually doing decently enough in the tournament can actually still make it. One of the examples actually being the likes of... Um, uh, if you watch the old one where it was... What's his name? Houston Haluchas and Nerf Fury. He was the one who went 1 1 throughout the series, and he actually did okay there at, um, at coming through with 1 1s and making it into the playoffs, right? So if you take a look at the points right now, this is with the uh, Bear Ticks not being up to date, but basically a win is a 2 0 is 3 points and a tie is 1 1. It is possible for you to go 1 1 consistently and most likely make it to the playoffs in top six maybe not top two definitely not top two actually unless you have a super competitive and spread out tournament in terms of skill and points being distributed all over the place a 1-1 saga is good enough for you to make it in with um with that type of uh, performance getting a couple of zero twos is still okay there are still chances that, for example in this tournament if we look at the six seed the six seed will be actually the okeechobee toros currently sitting at two points so after tonight if project actually gets five points if because the QB Destroyers did not win one tonight, right? Lana Kayla Conqueror's Sock Power Sky Sharks have not played until next week. So theoretically, you're looking at about a four or five point threshold. So if you actually want to calculate to see whether or not you can make it into the top six versus the top two, at this point, generally speaking, people will go up two O's. You have to wait for someone like Mitch or Ivan to drop a match before it starts dropping the threshold and possibilities for people to make it up to the top two seeds. Especially when they're both tying like this, they will have to, it, it, let's say that they both go 2-0 through all of their matches. Unlike but maybe likely at the same time, right? Um, and they do the head-to-head, -head, they'll be spreading it out like that. But, basically, you're looking through 3-6, to six, right? You look at the spread between the 7-6, and now you have a 5-point person in this tournament. Assuming that the Stockton Thunderous get 2-0 tonight, the threshold will be 3 points, but he's most likely still in. So, I wouldn't be too worried about points until maybe Week 7. Week 7 is when you really start to see what's going to be happening. Like, Week 3 basically determines the playstyle of the teams in my opinion, and then I start looking at the last two or three weeks of a tournament to see how it's going to be affecting the points. So, I wouldn't be too concerned, ladies and gentlemen, with your points right now. If you're not doing well right now, don't worry about it. There is still a chance for you to make it into the top six. And of course, just keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that even if you do not make it into the playoffs, you are still eligible for new bits for the MVP award at the very end. There is a reason that it has been brought in it is to reward, basically, support for all teams, not just looking at the top one in my tournament, so. It would depend on the on the head-to-head -head first, Mitchie, and then you do a best-of-three tiebreaker to go for the seats. Not right now, Ivan, but we do see you are here. Are you able to go right now, friend? We are waiting for everybody else to show up, so... It'd be great if you could get going right now. That way we can have a match to watch. Coach of the Year would go to us. <laughs> eh, it's the most, most valuable Pokemaster. It's, it's a horrible pun. I'm sorry. He's only played two games <laughs> out of the three. 
But let's see, if I go through Noob's notes, based on the based on the uh, expected outcomes of tonight, I did predict the Destroyers to take a 1-1 against Coma, which was actually okay, because it looked very close for Darkness in the beginning, which was great. It definitely shows that there are a lot, there's a lot of fights still left in him. I don't want him to feel discouraged. I definitely think that this was a better week showing for him. And this also shows like what he looked like in the practice trials, where he actually showed a good amount of fight and learning of the week. And again, I actually talk about it here. I was talking about the Sarasota Suicunes in this week's Noob's Notes, which, by the, by the way, gets released by the Saturday of before each new week comes out. You guys can take a read through how I see the team matchups and stuff like that. Also, the pokes to watch and the prediction of the series. And I think that the Sarasota Suicunes are another team that we are taking a look at to... Um, See if it's going to be an Ivan story. And what I mean by that is Ivan has shown significant growth from Season 2 all the way up until now, right? We saw him beginning with getting a decent game knowledge into it. For someone who wants to, of course, try hard in my tournament. Let's, let's talk about that, which seems to be gamer, which is no big deal. But we see the growth of the understanding of the game concepts. We see team comp being a much better. And now we're seeing a fantastic draft come out of Ivan. A fantastic play style coming out for him. And definitely identifying how he wants to play the game. And showing great success with it. And I think the Sarasota Suicunes are the next ones to watch that potentially will enter the tournament. As one of these main contenders if they do continue on in the future seasons. So... I think the draft is very well done. I think it does have a great... Um, read of this particular draft. However, I did predict a 2-0 to Ivan because, I mean, kid going through the Ivan story versus the literal Ivan, I think the literal Ivan's gonna have about, you know, two or three seasons worth of growth on a gamer. But like I said, I actually do think that this is the week where when we watch the Sarasota Suicunes, they have to be ready to take a game off of Ivan. And then the big one is, can he take a game? What does he battle? Uh, let's take a look at this. Suicunes. Oh wow, he actually battles Mitch next week. So that those will be these will be the very two most important weeks for gamer. Can he take on the top two Titans, which are just the seasoned veterans, right? We're not talking in terms of uh, you know the best that will smash everybody, but we are talking the most seasoned veterans in this tournament, playing the most seasons out of everybody here. Week four and week five will be very important for the Suicunes to actually show that they are a top contender that will be most likely going into the playoffs. It doesn't mean necessarily it's true. People at the bottom can still take 2-0s over everybody and kick the Suicunes out. But with the current trend, it's looking good. And even taking a single game off of Ivan will be one step closer to boosting confidence to be able to take on the Pichu Warriors next week. While we wait for Ivan to show up, let's take a look at their draft. Fuck, stop doing that. Yikes. Please. I don't know why it does that all of a sudden. I had that fixed. Anyways. Let's, let's take a look at our next match tonight, which will be W. Wellington versus the Sarasota Suicunes. Might as well take a look at it while we're talking about it. Uh, like I said, this is the week where I think there's actually going to be... This is not going to be so much about team comps per se. We know that Ivan and Gamer are both building the way that they play right we've seen some changes especially when it comes to the effectiveness of Halucha and also seeing the def the uh, the choices for Registeel and Suicune and seeing how they've been evolving week by week but we know that Ivan is going to be bringing either the Ivan special or he's going to be bringing very strong movesets on Pokemon bringing the right Pokemon for it and my question is can Gamer after showing that one loss from a slight mistake last weekend or last week when he battled he can't do that against Ivan because Ivan will feast off of it and most likely take the game even harder than it was already lost. So, I think it basically comes down to the playstyle tonight. It's going to be making no mistakes in the game execution and making sure that if you are going to be fighting a defensive core like Tangrowth, Cofagrigus, Starmie, and uh, Mantine, right? Which we've seen Tangrowth, Mantine. Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty hard to do with these numbers here, but you will see the Rhydon, you see the Tangrowth being pretty much paired, and then you'll see the Mantine as that de especially defensive Pokemon. But Rhydon is just such a beast to get through. One advantage is, well, if Halucha gets going, Acrobatics on the Mantine, High Jump Kick, or Acrobatics on the Tangrowth, High Jump Kick on the Rhydon, you're, you're looking at a Pokemon that could necessarily damage these cores and take them out if properly set up. You also have stuff like the Salamence. Like, it really comes down to can you take the walls down and go from there. Also looking at particular Pokemon, there are certain Pokemon that can just kind of have fun. The Mega Glalie was actually something I was slightly looking at, Mitch. I 
don't know if Ivan likes playing with Glalie. He, he, he's using it, but, you know, it's really hard to tell from the first two games that he used because, yes, they were, they were kind of integral and taking a poke or two out, but, like, I don't know. We really need, not to sound insult or anything, but Ivan needs a challenge, right? He needs a team that doesn't just have where his 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 draft just basically outdrafts the opponent, right? Winning from draft, as I mentioned with Darkness versus Michi, it's like it's one of those games where you just kind of have to sit there back as a coach and go, well, you know what? No matter how well I play, his draft is just straight better than mine, so I expect to just struggle in a win, let alone probably just roll over and die, right? It's just one of those things that happens in Pokemon. Pokemon is definitely not perfect, and when it comes to drafting in a mixed tier, you're definitely going to find those things where it's like one Pokemon literally takes out nine or ten of yours, and you can't stop it, right? There's very little ways for you to stop it without going too crazy, and once you go crazy with a moveset, chances are you've weakened up that Pokemon's potential to handle something else on your opponent's team. It just happens. Right? Is World Leader ready? I haven't seen him talk once in chat. When was he gonna tell me he's ready? <sighs> World Leader, I'm not looking at Discord. <laughs> uh, I wish I had 10 eyes to pay attention to everything. Sadly, I don't even have two that work properly, so. You could let me know in, you know, the chat that I'm, you know, reading. Thanks, man. <laughs> Alright, well, now that we've talked about W. Wellington and the Sarasota Suicunes, let's look at our second match tonight between the Stockton Thunderers and the Pichu Warriors. Oh, uh, this is one where we definitely have to talk about just draft in general. I mean, World Leaders Draft looks fun. I definitely think it is fun. I do think that there is a lot that can go for it. I do think there's also ways to improve it, but in the end, I really just, I want to see that basic core that he has that's going to make his team work, which I think is the Tentacruel, the uh, Decidui, and that Mandibuzz. I think that it's just the way he does it. He could stick with the Sand Core. I don't care. It seems to work well for him. But we really just need to see... We just really need to see him bringing... What the hell? That's good. Show that on stream, game. That's not even... I don't know. Stupid computer. Yeah. <laughs> what the... F why are these showing... Okay, I'm really sorry. I don't know why that's happening. I really don't know why all this is showing up randomly. I apologize. That has not been uh, organized like that. Neato burrito. Anyways, another reason why you guys send me your poke paste in advance so that doesn't happen. Either way, just freaking click that. <laughs> Anywho. Apparently, there's something in the back of my computer's head. Not mine. I'm trying to... I literally have the way that I do it. There's the one tab for the tournament. There's a second tab for my notes. And there's a third tab for the polka pastes. But because you guys send me late, I have to click on that tab. And I thought I actually clicked on that tab. And apparently, I did not. So, there you go. Your fault for sending it late. Ha ha! Never blame yourself, noob. Always blame the opponent. Either way. We're at a game number one, guys. Second match of the night. No free point for the Pichu Warriors. He'll have to earn it against the Stockton Thunderous on the far side. Let's take a look at the teams. I actually like seeing the Decidueye and Empoleon early off. Very good. We see a Firewater Grass Core. Let's get into it. Looking at the side of the Pichu Warriors, pretty standard. We actually see some action from the Golbat today. It is going to be the Shaman versus the Empoleon lead. Uh, he could stay in and try and go for a Sea Flare, see what he's got going on. I don't think he needs to take that risk. Empoleon's not going to be doing too, too much to the Mew, maybe. Let's see what he can do with it. So if I look at the team, Mitch can sweep with that Sharpedo no problem. Ice Fang, 
and a liquidation will basically destroy that entire team with that Empoleon out of the way. What is he going to use for that Empoleon? Uh, we could see Earth Power uh, Heatran come in. It could take the hit well enough. Or, you know, just getting a crit C flare on is a pretty good start. He does opt to take the Ice Beam hit, but I really do think he has to be careful because unless that is a Focus Sash Lucario, he has to be very careful. But nonetheless, he's not going to get the kill on the Empoleon as he is going to take out the Shaman. I don't think that mess necessarily matters because all he has to do is if that Empo if that Lucario loses some damage on it, Sharpedo just wins from this state, right? You cannot tank that many hits up. Maybe Hippowdon needs a little bit of damage on it. But Decidueye can't take a Crunch, or, or maybe not. Maybe it could take an Ice Fangs. Um, no, Crunch would definitely be used. So, it's up to World Leader to kind of feign what that Lucario could be bringing, because I don't think... It gets Vacuum Wave. Maybe he'll save it for Vacuum Wave. That could be a thing that he's bringing it for. He can run Bullets, Bullet Punch, or Vacuum Wave, which I think is going to be better in this particular matchup, especially if you read the Pichu Warriors. Plus, the Decidueye could handle the likes of the Mew and the uh, Slow King, so he does have some good matchup here. The Slow King is going to come in. Obviously, we could potentially see a Grass Knot come out from Empoleon, which will be faster and will do a decent amount, but the Regenerator Core will matter. I don't think he would use Earthquake, though. I think he wants to Triple Bite with Mega Sharpedo once he gets the speed boost up. Because Liquidation, Crunch, and Ice Fangs will just be more than enough to take on the majority of the ground-type Pokemon on World Leader's team. You can put uh, names on him, Ivan. Again, I'm sorry that it showed up like that. I don't know why that's happening. I'm moving all of them over to the tabs before it shows up on stream, so I apologize for that. Either way. <laughs> you can just tell him, you know, gamer. By the way, let's see what World Leader wants to do with this. I do think that if he does have something where he's just going to end up going for the Skull, maybe try and get the burn on it. It's not going to matter, but the future sight comes in. Interesting. So, as we said, and as Mitch was actually explaining to me, Future Sight is a move that is used to force switches, because otherwise it is a base 150 hit flying at an opponent. That's a lot of damage coming out. So, Future Sight is basically going to mean that if he takes out Empoleon, another Pokemon comes in. The turn after, something is going to get heavily smacked, whether uh, Slowking is out here or not. Because I think... I don't know if it applies... Oh yeah, you could drag a tail to get the Future Sight did. Does it apply the stab whether Slowking is out or not, or does Slowking have to be out to get the stab? Because what he could try to do is switch in Mew if that's the case. Ooh, gets a nice hit. He's going to go into something to take that Future Sight. Hopefully it's not the Lucario, because he really needs that, I think, to, to use that Vacuum Wave. But it's going to be Decidueye to take the hit as the Ice Beam is going to come through. Just safe. It's going to do a fair amount of damage between uh, the Ice Beam and... Thing on that. It looks like it's going to be Assault Vest, though, just based on the way that it takes it. Slowking has a lot of special attack. So, can use the Spirit Shackles here, but it is going to be the Golbat coming in as we actually see a Substitute! Interesting! Coming out from the Decidueye. Now, <laughs> if he's running Infiltrator on Golbat, oh my god, I'm going to feel so bad, because Infiltrator now breaks through Sub. It goes through the Sub and just hits the person behind the Sub. So... If his Golbat has that, which I could, you know, kind of expect. I don't think he'd be worried about flinching too, too much on the Golbat. So, it is just going to be the Brave Burn. And lo and behold, we see Infiltrator go right through the sub. Unfortunate for World Leader. Don't think it's necessarily planned, but it's just it's just a good ability to run on the Golbat. Again, you're not worried about the flinches. This thing runs Eviolite. It's bulky. It gets flinched a couple times, whatever. Plus, look at that World Leader's team. He's not looking for the hacks. Right, so Infiltrator is just going to go right through it, takes out the Decidueye, so whatever you want to do with that is just not going to work. The Flygon is now going to come in, probably try and go for Stone Edge, just put some pressure down on the side of the Pichu Warriors. Mew can probably come back in, or even the Slow King, because Slow King's got the Regenerator boost, he could take the hit. Might be able to take more than one hit? How much was he left with? 21%? Maybe not, actually. He could go into the Mew to tank it up, though. That's what I'm saying, Laser D. Stone Edge is going to come through, doesn't do a hell of a lot, he actually just ends up going for the damage onto the Flygon. Maybe guaranteeing that he could take out Flygon with the Liquidation once he brings in the Mega Sharpie to the sweep. The Mew is going to come in though as the Stone Edge does come out, nice crit, doesn't do a hell of a lot. We do see the Leftovers taking him down to about a quarter of his health lost. Uh, we may see something along the lines of just a straight out attack on this, or maybe a Will-O-Wisp, just try and hit something else here. He does end up just going for the Will-O-Wisp. Not too great for World Leader as he is going to have his Hippowdon burned. Little chip damage here and there basically nullifies any potential le leftovers, which I'm sure he's running on it. But Ice Beam is actually going to be shown here as Stealth Rock is used. 
However, we actually do not see left... Do we see leftovers? We don't see leftovers on this Hippowdon. It could be Smooth Rock, maybe, that he's trying to get that eight-turn sand going. I'm kind of curious to see. So, the problem is... Camerupt has Solid Rock, but when it, if it Mega Evolves, it gets Sheer Force, which means that it's still going to die. Ground-type does get a special defense boost, but not a defense boost. So this thing is going to come in and try to do work. Sharpedo's looking healthier and healthier, and plus the Stealth Rocks are up now, which means if that is a Focus Sash... I'm curious, I think... Hmm. Ooh, nice damage. That's a lot of damage coming out from the camera. But at this point, Pichuwer is probably just looking for as much damage as possible before he's just going to let... This thing will die to rocks once it comes in, so he's probably just going to go for the damage. Maybe the freeze if he gets it, but um, if that Lucario can't kill with Vacuum Wave, any potential Focus Sash that it has now is basically gone. Nice crit from the Mew as the Fire Blast is going to be used just in case he freezes. Smart play by World Leader, but uh, you know he knows that also the Heatran's not going to come in, but then again, he could have easily sent in the Shur He could have sent in the Slow King, but now... Mitch wants to go for it. He thinks that there, even if it's Focus Sash, he's confident he can kill. Maybe he also knows that he can take something along the lines of the Vacuum Wave when he Mega Evolves. But he also is taking some Sand Damage here, which can make it better for him. He is going to get the Speed Boost while also getting the Kill Off, so that's well played by him. Doesn't need to go for the Protect. He doesn't actually need to go for the Protect at all. He will outspeed a Flygon at this point, too. I don't think Flygon's... Flygon's base... 100 or 80 speed? I think it's base 100 speed, so he could go for it if he sees the Flygon come in, just in case it's Scarfed. I don't remember if we saw an item on it. Thank you, Nightbot. You're very useful. Um, but yeah, with the amount of chip that he could be taking from Santa, it might bring him into range that if a vacuum wave is existent on the Lucario, then it could just kill him off. So he does have to be careful with that, but he still has the goal bat to handle it, so Mitch could still uh, scout with that very easily. If he's even worried about that. Not too sure. Where's this Sharpedo is putting in a lot of work, but very similar to Project's Crawdont. Water, Dark, and then uh, even Icy's Mamoswine seems to be the best typing to handle these types of drafts. Flygon is going to come in. Is probably just going to drop. Maybe he's just trying to force him to not take damage, but he can. I mean, Mitch can just go for Yeah, you can go for the Protect and go for the kill with plus 3 speed. But we don't see... It's most likely Scarfed if he made that type of play with the U-turn. Didn't try and go for anything like Outrage, just try and kill this thing off. But it's going to be Mega Sharpedo at plus 2 now, just goes for the Ice Fang. And now he's at plus 2, and the Sand is also done. Maybe he knows. It is Lucario's time to come in. If he really is worried, Mega Sharpedo outspeeds both of them. He can switch, but he isn't going to outspeed. No priority to be seen. The Earthquake is actually the move choice for him, and that is going to be game number 1. Going over to the Pichu Warriors. GG. Ground is weak to ice. Yes, it is, Coma. And unfortunately for World Leader, we don't see that priority come out. Maybe he wasn't thinking about that or what, but we know that this is such a good Pokemon for Pichu Warriors, and Lucario would be one of those things that can help it. I don't know, Ivan. Good call on the Earthquake, though. I did not actually expect it. Maybe he had the Earthquake to handle the Empoleon uh, overall. I do think either way, he didn't even need the Earthquake there. It just mattered for him to actually take it out. Maybe he also knows that that Liquidation wouldn't kill him even after just Stealth Rock damage. I'd be very surprised, actually, but maybe not. Might be very, It might be too close, and that's why he's running the Earthquake to handle that. But even then, I'd also be worried about priority in any case. But nonetheless, hey, Mitch is taking wins. I'm not, so Mitch is a god. I just talk about movesets the best that I can. And I'm going to close the battle records by accident. Anyways. So what can World Leader do about that? He... I mean, the Tentacruel will also be handled. I now see more use in the Earthquake now that I see both the Tentacruel and the Empoleon having issues with taking it up. Mandibuzz is going to get hit by the Ice Fangs. Bronzong might be his, his better choice, maybe? But even then, he takes damage from the, from the Crunch. He's still just destroyed by Crunch, so... Literally, that Sharpedo is having a field day with his stuff, so 
that is going to be an unfortunate thing that he does have to handle, so. Again, just, it's one of those things. I even apparently not. Underdog, not a good player. Tied for first currently. Interesting, Ivan. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I called the Slow King and Mew with the Sharpedo. We did actually did we actually saw the Sinjuai and the Flygon come out from World Leader. I do think that his team was okay, but without that priority to use against the Sharpedo, he's just gonna basically get swept if he keeps taking that much damage. Even then the coverage is so perfect. There's a super effective move for every single Pokemon on his team. What do you do with that? You just kind of pray that nothing else gets hurt, I suppose. So. Maybe we'll have to see if he has something planned for me. I mean, it is World Leader. I do trust that he can bring me something um, interesting. But I don't, I don't know what it would be. The only thing I could even think um, that I could possibly think, and this is a far stretch, Trick Room, right? If he brought Trick Room Bronzong, right? That's the only thing I could think of to counteract that speed, and now we see he has no Aqua Jet. It could technically do it, but that would be like, hey, you know what? Bronzong Camera Upped. There you go, Reverse Sweep Mitch. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. I really think that if Mitch keeps getting away with these Hyper Carries, maybe we do need to see more Trick Room. Noob is Trick Room crazy right now. Project or someone promised me I might see Trick Room this week. I don't think I saw it from the guy who promised me it, so I want to see it from the people here. Maybe Ivan people are happy with their with their teams. Who knows? We might see it in the future, but for now. Okay, do I have everybody's... We don't see Doodle yet. I don't know where he is. Ox and Lanakila Conquers be showing up, so if Doodle doesn't show up by the end of the Sarasota Suicunes to... He might be stuck at work. That might be something, unfortunately. You think it's DD Flygon, Ivan? The way that he played Flygon, I mean, at that point he was down to three Pokemon anyways. So, maybe trying to fake that it's Scarf, but again, he had the freedom to go for the Protect to check it, right? So... I don't know! Give me a second, Como. I'll get your trades at the end of the match. I'll also have to check to see if you can trade. You can. Good. Okay. Just check. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Definitely very good match tonight. Of course, like I said at the very beginning, we only have four, potentially three series tonight, which might not be the worst thing because my legs are absolutely killing me right now. But, do appreciate all of you showing up. If you do want to use your Nubus that you earn by watching the channel or gambling, because, you know, that's a thing we're allowed to do, uh, feel free to do it in the video extension down to the bottom right. You can support your favorite teams through that. Again, at the end, the most valuable Pokemon Master will be handed out to the person with the most Nubus support and is, well, yeah, I'm not going to mention the other condition because that condition is not fair. So, yeah. MVP award will also, someone will also receive a reward for that. I think it's definitely been a good thing for the community to get more involved with. If you want to see any more of the information for the Pro Pokeball, if you're interested in future Pro Pokeballs or to be a free agent, which means substitutes for people who may need help in the future, let's say you can't make a weekly investment, but you can make a nightly investment to help people come out and cover their teams for them if they need it, definitely take a look at all the information down below. You can also drop exclamation bowl in chat for you to see all the information regarding the Pro Pokeball. It is an extensive document. Honestly, after the Nuzlocke document is fixed, this is the only document I do expect you to read all the way through. <laughs> Ivan, we have one more match and then you'll be next. I'm pretty sure it's choice, Ivan. The way that he played it, like, World Leader's a good battler, so I know he's not going to um, try and risk doing that. Especially when you already see he's having problems with the uh, Sharpedo. The only thing he can do is try and force him when he doesn't have the speed, outspeed it at plus one with a choice thing, and just destroy him with a choice scarf. That's the only thing he can do. Right? Again, the only other thing that I can potentially think of is Trick Room Bronzong into a camera uh, reverse sweep because if he gets Slowking out of the way, which he has with Decidueye, he can handle the Heatran and Shaman using um, using Mega Camera up to, with the Trick Room up. So, that's the only thing I can potentially see happening. 
Will I see it? Well, haven't seen Thunder Punch yet, so anything is possible. <coughs> Either way, though, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting into game number two. <coughs> Excuse me. Peach Warriors up 1-0. Can they make it yet again? Another 2-0. Put them up to 12 whopping points in four weeks. On their way to a perfect season. Or can World Leader shut me up? We do see the Bronzong, though. So this should be very, very interesting. So let's see now. So that Bronzong will have Levitate. So the Bronzong's the best bet at taking any hits from Mega Sharpedo. But we also see just... Well, no Sharpedo. Mitch just opts for the other six. Let's see if he can style on World Leader right now. He's going to be the Beedrill versus the Flygon. We know... That that Beedrill is going to be Mega. It won't outspeed the Choice Scarf, unfortunately. But the Stone Edge is going to come through. Do a decent amount to the Floors, but not nearly enough. Moonblast is expected to come out. But we could see something like a Toxic come out predicting a Switch. Uh, Bronzong would be the best thing to go into. And it is just that as a Wish actually comes out from Mitchie. Well played. He is going to get a heal on anything that could potentially take damage. But at the same time here, the Thunderous do basically get a free Stealth Rock. So... Oh, legs have a lot more than three right now, Coma. We do actually see the uh, Dublade come in as the Toxic is actually fired off instead of the Stealth Rock. But yeah, now Dublade could just basically go for the setup as a Reflect comes in. Now, this does mean that most likely Dublade is getting up to plus six. And behind the Reflect, yeah, it's going to help a bit. We see Psy Wave. Ooh. So Side Wave is interesting because it uses the level 100 and basically fluctuates between it. So this goes through um, Eviolite, but it also means that he's going to... It's almost like... Th it's Well, basically, if you think about it, it's just like an inconsistent Seismic Toss, but it hits Ghost types. So this is really good, actually. He gets a fair amount of damage down on this Deblade. Unfortunately, he might be able just to take the plus 4. Mitch may opt for plus 6 and go for the guaranteed kill, knowing that Sideway may not kill, but Mana Buzz is going to be coming in as the plus 6 comes through. Still has one turn to reflect. Might be able to take it? Ooh, I don't know. This is a... This is a close one with Iron Head, but maybe Mana Buzz... Actually, you know what? Mana Buzz speed and just go for Foul Play. So at this point, might just have to go for the plus 6 Shadow Sneak, get as much damage down as possible, and let this thing die. Or save this thing for labor, maybe seeing that he can get a sweep. What would he switch into, though? He'd have to switch to the Clef Key to take the Foul Play. And he is going to do just that to take. It doesn't want to risk it, nor does World Leader. He's got to make sure the thing is taken out so he doesn't have more priority killing him off. Speed's already killing everybody in this tournament. Let's stop that further with his Mana Buzz. I'm liking this coming out as the Taunt comes through as a Play Rough is just used instead. Doesn't do anything, really. But sometimes you see Draining Kiss on the side of uh, Clef Key as well, but Play Rough just, you know, clanging keys, smack it against the Vulture. Not doing too, too much, unfortunately. But we do see the Taunt come out on Klefki, so this is good for World Leader. He can go back into something like a Powdon or the Bronzong. He does opt to go for the Powdon as the Florge does make a switch in. Well played, actually, by both. I do think the Bronzong would have had a little bit better chance because then Florge would have to worry about a Gyro Ball. Uh, but Stealth Rock is going to be set up now. Very interesting, actually, that the Bronzong it might have a double Stealth Rocker on his team. Maybe. Or Bronzong's carrying something I wasn't thinking about. Moonblast is going to come through, do a decent chunk. As Iron... <laughs> Whoa! Is that the new rendition of Thunder Punch? Iron Tail Hippowdon. That's definitely not a normal set. But it is going to mean that it can take on the floors and it gets a defense drop. Which means next Iron Tail will do a lot. I'm definitely... Well, based on the number of turns, we've seen that the Sandstorm... Why is it only going 2 to 5? It should be a lot more than that. Either way, it's going to be 8 turns. We saw it with Smooth Rock, I believe. Maybe? I wasn't counting rocks. I wasn't counting sand last time. I was too busy focusing on how that Mega Sharpedo was going to destroy World Leader. But it is going to be the Deblade coming in to take the Iron Tail. It can go for something like uh, Shadow Sneak and maybe get him a free switch into maybe Beedrill. Oh, we do actually see a Slack Off. Well played by World Leader. Abuses the fact he can most likely heal on it. Is he looking for something like Tyrantrum to come in and do things? Nope, it's just going to be outsped by the Earthquake. Let's him go. He wants him at full HP. Sometimes you can abuse full HP Pokemon at your advantage because you make them waste a turn to heal and then you know something will kill. Beedrill is going to come in. Is going to take Stealth Rock damage. He's going to go for the Mega now as he ends up going for the U-turn. Probably going to switch into the Florge to take the hits. Oh, it actually ends up going into Klefki as maybe expects... 
Iron Tail to come through? Okay, well, Iron Tail wouldn't have done as much as Earthquake, but nonetheless does make the prediction into the Forge and ends up going for Iron Tail. Makes the miss. We do. Ah, okay, so he has his own dual setup here. Now, we have seen leftovers on the Clef Key, so if this thing is dual screen spikes with Play Rough, uh, it is going to set up for Mega Beedrew to kind of feel safe. It could also be a Tyrantrum uh, coming in the end here, or even the end shot. Like, some of these things can just come in safely, but it is just going to look like. We're getting a bunch of spikes set up here. Everything's going to be potentially softened up for the likes of... What's it called? Mega Beedrill to come in. Usually Mega Beedrill does well when everything's damaged. It doesn't necessarily set up unless it goes for something like Felstinger. But uh, we do see Defog come out. So everything is going to be removed as Moonblast comes through. That's a lot of damage for Mandibuzz to take through. Don't know if it's necessarily worth it for World Leader to try and get that out of the way now. I think he has to threaten this Forge a little bit more before Mandibuzz can make any of these types of plays. Because now he's just lost so much HP on a physical blocker. Which means that I think it's now in race for Mega Beedrill to kill it off with uh, maybe U-Turn or maybe, like, especially after Stealth Rocks. If we're going to see those coming out, maybe, maybe Tyrantrum? I don't know if Tyrantrum actually gets Stealth Rocks. But, we do see this Hippowdon coming back in. I think going for Earthquake is perfectly fine. It actually does, like, Iron Tail will do 200 base power versus Earthquake doing 150. He'll also just go for it anyways. He knows he's going to be taking the damage. Doesn't get the defense drop, but, I mean, even Earthquake will just cover. It does a little bit less. It's 150, but... I mean, you keep going for it, but if he falls for it again where Klefki comes back in, sets up the Reflect, it would be a good time to try and go for the Earthquake prediction, maybe. So you do actually see the rest come through. This could go on for quite some time, but the other thing that's happening right now is Mitch is wasting the sand turns. So with the sand not being up, the chip damage is not going to be there, which means that with the Stealth Rocks also gone because of the Defog, we have Mega Beedrill is even safer to come in and try and re-sweep, especially with the Klefki having the Prankster Spike. So really, Mitch can just re reset this process and repeat it by going for Wish, put it onto the Klefki, Klefki goes for the Spikes, and the Mega Beedrill still feels safe, as the Stealth Rocks will come out now. But the problem is, because Klefki's coming in, if he wants to get rid of all of this Reflect stuff again, he's gonna have to blow away his own Rocks, and then I still feel like then, because Mandibuzz lost, Mandibuzz lost so much HP, it can't take another time with Florge and its Moonblast, so... Florge is gonna come in. Earthquake is going to come through, and this is the exact process, right? You scare him off from not wanting to go into that Mandibuzz, do the exact same thing behind the Reflect, can take the Moonblast better, which means that if it goes for, or take the Iron Tails better, which means two Moonblasts will do enough damage to force him to slack off, which means he gets the Wish, and just winces and repeats. He's not going to die anytime soon. We would need to see something like a crit right now for the side of the Stockton Thunderous, looking to take a point off of the top... One of the top two players in the Pro Pokeball at the moment. Let's see what he could do with it. Because I definitely like that World Leader brought out Pokemon that would kind of handle Mitch's stronger half. It definitely does seem like he's bringing kind of the scraps of his of his team here. So might try and maybe he's just trying to give himself a uh, you know a way to try and get himself through this. But at the same time, I mean, if World Leader takes a point. That's big. That's a big. That's big implication for World Leader taking another point and just pushing his total up more. Right? It just makes him have a higher standing in the top six. So. There you go, gamer. No, there's no giant stall fest. This is a little bit different because this stall will actually lead to something. The stall that you guys had was going to be basically going nowhere until someone got PP stalled. But this is not too bad from Pichu Warriors. We also have to take a look at the power points. Earthquake down to 11. Iron Tail down to 18. So it's not going to be anytime soon. But definitely, I think Mitch in the end keep playing this out. If War Leader doesn't make a drastic change in his play style, we are just going to see two move work well. Reflects out, but again, he could just go for Wish, heal himself up, go for Wish again, go into Klefki, rinse and repeat, keep setting the Reflect, and then the more pressure he puts down on this Apowder on try and stay in and go for Earthquakes or Iron Tails, he's just going to do the, it's just going to be bad for him, right? So. Well, Project, you might be taking a 2-0 tonight because I've heard nothing from Doodle. I can double check, but I don't think I actually heard anything from him, so.
Either way, though, we're going to see the Reflect Iron Tail. It's going to be going on for quite some time, but I'm pretty sure it's going to play out the way that I said, where he's just going to try and keep getting... Once this Hippowdon is down, or gets really low, the Mega Beedrill feels relatively safe to come in. It's the way it's going to work, and he's eventually going to run out of attacks. They're both going to run out of attacks. The difference being, you got 29 Reflex. You also got, you know... We also have to look at the Moon Blasts once the Florge comes out, but... This type of stall can go on for quite some time, and I think it could go either way depending on how it's played, but he does actually make the switch into the Bronzong now. So he makes a slight difference, wants to get that sand up again next time, but also puts down maybe a Gyro Ball or some other move that he's got planned with his Bronzong. As the Clef Key is now going to come in, we'll be able to take the hit relatively well. We actually see the Toxic just do absolutely nothing, which cannot risk that Floor's getting toxic because that would just make it really bad for him. As the Spikes are now going to come in, this is actually the time that Mitchie needed. This is the absolute ops This is the opportunity for him to set up his hazards, start getting all that damage in on the switches. His world Leader is not making the switch, tries to wait out the Reflect. If you're going to set up a Reflect, you got to get out of there. This is dual screens. We're just going to see Psywave come through again. Actually, Psywave is going to make it so that he could potentially do upwards to 150 damage to the walls. Believe it or not, Clefkey and Florge, not the hugest on HP, so I actually very... This is very interesting. I like the choice of Psywave because Mitchie's walls, with these walls in particular, don't have high HP stats, which means, you know, two to three Psywaves could actually end a wall. You already saw 52% as this is going to come out now. <laughs> That's just doing so much damage. That's actually very smart on the side of the Stockton Thunders. I really like that. Knockoff will come through. We'll take off the leftovers. As we just see a Toxic now dropped on this thing. Not the most important thing, but uh, it's something. I would have preferred the Psy Wave just to keep putting damage down. Even if this thing has a Regenerator, it can't take the risk of taking the third one unless he's really worried about losing the Bronzong. But, or losing the Mian Chao, I should say. We do see a bit of a mix-up, though. Two, two layers of Spikes being out here. We'll put pressure on anything else coming out. We still haven't seen Decidueye. I still haven't seen Lucario. So, World Leader feeling okay right now. He's putting a lot of This Bronzong is definitely carrying him quite hard right now with the Psy Wave pressure. And Psy Wave, I believe, gets... Yeah, it has 24, so... You know. It's doing a bunch of damage. A bit... In, I think it's a bit inaccurate. I can't remember what... I think it's 90. But either way, the Forge is going to come in as we actually see the Flygon make a move in. But the Reflect is still up. What is he going to do with this? He's just going to have to U-turn out of here. Yeah, he doesn't take any spike damage, but... He's basically given him a free wish. I think he could have just stayed in there and kept spamming Psywave. Because even though he's not behind the Reflect, he's not taking that much damage, especially if he built defensively. So... I don't know. This is, uh... I, I really hope he's not making him... Oh, he's going into this now. He's just going to sack off the Mandibuzz. Yeah, he he's behind it. He knows he's not going to die. Because the Bronzong's not into threatened with the Psywave, he's not going to be forced to wish. So you can just go aggressive with the Moon Blast. Is now Lucario maybe coming in with Bullet Punch <laughs> or something? Meteor Mash also now on Lucario. So can he can he force him out of here? But into what? Because Klefki will take the hit, go for Reflect, and then, you know, can potentially play rough even just to do some damage to this thing. But doesn't even have to make that risk. You just go for the, go for the Reflect. If it's something else, as Meteor Mash is going to come through. Floor just finally... Finally, turn 43 in, taken out. As now Mian Chao comes in, does outspeed by a fair chunk, and will actually just threaten with high jump kick. Something is going to have to take a high jump kick here. Could be Decidueye coming in. We could also just see something like a U-turn with the prediction that Stockton Thunders might go into the Decidueye. Uh, I would definitely trade the spikes damage for the high jump kick potential of not happening. Plus, it's only a, it's only a neutral hit with the U-turn. So It will, however, give Mian Chao a lot of regenerator bonus right now. Which is kind of unfortunate, because again, this would have been such a lower HP if he had just gone for the Psy Wave on this. And kept spamming out Psy Wave, because that really does keep Mitch at bay. Sidui is going to make the move in. We could see, yep, High Jump Kick just misses. He's just going to kill off his Mian Chao. It's gone. So now it's 5-3. to three. <laughs> But he might just be looking for a free switch in here to Mega Beedrill. He can just go for the knockoff. Put pressure on something, try and start killing stuff off. He does have the two layer spikes, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Mega Beedrill is going to come in. If he had Vacuum Wave, he would have used it against the uh, Mega Sharpedo. Didn't show it. I don't know why he'd hide it until Game 2, especially since the Mega Sharpedo was away from the win. As Knockoff will come through, is a one-shot. We knew that that was a uh, substitute leftovers. Decidueye, I haven't seen anything out of it, but we are going to see the Flygon come in. It will outspeed. Can go just go for the safe Earthquake. Earthquake hits all three of Mitchie's Pokemon. If this thing isn't Scarfed... That doesn't make sense. Klefki is going to come in. We'll most likely have to take... 
Oh, world leader. Oh, why? Oh. Earthquake would have killed from that range, but ops for the Stone Edge. Oh, my body. <laughs> oh, my God. As now the Bronzong has to come in. Yeah, I could go for Psywave, but we could have seen Klefki just take a hefty chunk, if not potentially close to death, Earthquake. But the three layers of spikes now comes up. Reflect comes out, but honestly, I mean... He could have been feeling a lot safer right now. Is that play rough's going to do next to nothing? He's just going to look to get his Mega Beedrill in safely as the side wave gets fired out. Does so much damage to the Klefki. Because it has no HP. <laughs> Unfortunate, man. But this is definitely not a Jeopardy. See, you guys are thinking about this in the wrong way. Ooh, Thunder Wave actually misses. Thank you, Gen 7, as that's going to be taken down. It's down to this Tyrantrum. Now, if he has enough damage, Tyrantrum, if it is Scarfed, believe it or not, could still be away from... Well, no. If it's Scarfed, he can't... He can't Earthquake. No, he's, he can't be. He'd have to be switching it. He would be switching it more to try and put pressure down now. But because of that Scarf Flag, I think he might just have to go like... I don't know. He's going to try and get as much damage done as possible. Maybe like a Life Orb Tyrantrum? What are we bringing on this Tyrantrum? Probably not something that's going to have, um... Yeah, anything to, to give him productivity here. But Earthquake, or sorry, um, what's it called? Knockoff's not going to be doing that much damage because he's already lost his leftovers. Plus, he's behind the Reflect. So, really, he's just... He's suffering here. I, I think, you know, Mitchy might be styling a bit too hard. I really want to see what the Tyrantrum's going to be bringing to see if it will actually be able to finish off the rest of his team. It doesn't outspeed... The Flygon. At the same time, though, I don't think Earthquake one-shots it, because Tyrantrum is still a fairly defensively bulky Pokemon. And with this... No, Hippodon's not hurt, so yeah, Psywave comes through. It's Tyrantrum versus the world. Let's see what Michi can actually do here. If he can do anything, or is he going to be giving up his first series to Stalked and Thunderous? Let's see. If he brings out some kind of Life Orb, he can try. He is just going to go straight Outrage. Doesn't even do nearly enough as a Toxic comes out to basically put the timer on the game however we do see the um what's it called we do see the the reflect go away so he will be able to kill off the uh what's it called bronze on but he is being weakened if this thing is for some reason scarfed and at the same time the flag on is scarfed the flag on will be outsped this thing could be carrying vacuum wave are we gonna see it if it's scarf we'll see it right now and it is lo and behold scarf but it doesn't kill off the lucario as that might just be the z move all out Pummeling and in hubris do the Pichu Warriors fall. GG. Stockton Thunderous take a game off of Mitch's bench. <laughs> oh, one has to question why he tried that, but clearly feeling a little bit more comfortable in his position right now in this tournament. Takes a risk. Gets chat on for it, frankly. It's gonna be the 1-1 one -one there. Now... <laughs> uh, now, let's be honest, right? Honestly... Based on the way that we saw the Bronzong built with the Psywave, Wave, which I actually thoroughly enjoy, I do think that World Leader brought potentially the best possible team he could bring for the likes of Mitchie's team, but you know that Mega Sharpedo was going to sweep him, right? At the same time, that's not the team. There you go. At the same time, like, we can't say it was Stalin. He brought his six Pokemon he wasn't using, right? So you can expect it's not going to be as strong, and the synergy just wasn't there, although he did still have the pressure down, right? It just so happens that, you know, he just can never get the Mega Beedrill in a position where the rest of World Leader's team was weakened to the point where he could just take him out. But it still was possible. He just didn't have the right resources to do it. And, and clearly, you know, doesn't have a Heatran, doesn't bring a shame in. Like, it's just, it's Mitch trying his best to try and make something out of his, out of his scraps. And he gets scrapped for it. So nonetheless, World Leader going up a point, actually making some people at the bottom of the ladder kind of a little nervous that World Leader's pushing that threshold of staying in the top six already. Well, when we get to the halfway mark, gotta start looking and seeing mm, those people with one point. 
I see Ox and Darkness gonna have to make a move very soon to even start pushing against World Leader, who is setting the ladder up a little bit more, but one could say Michi is also the proprietor of setting the top six expectations up higher as well. We'll be back for series number three between the Sarasota Speedcoons and W. Wellington right after that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. See you in a few. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Pokeball Season 4, Week 4. We are getting into our third series of the match, which they've already brought out. We've already talked about them anyway, so you might as well get into this David vs. Goliath or Ivan vs. Young Ivan battle, because, you know, we're kind of expecting. This is the night that Gamer has to prove himself. Can he do it against Ivan, the man who has been just getting better and better? No free points for you, friend. The man has just been getting better and better each season. Let's see what they can do. Suicune's on the close side. Well, it's it on the far side. We are going to see a Z-move instantly fly out of the Hydro Vortex, take out the Entei right away. Was it necessary? I think Hydro Pump could have done just the same amount, but he is just going to assert authority and take him out right now. But let's take a look at the teams. We do have to see the Stunfisk and the Hypno making an appearance where we look at the side of W. Wellington. 
Kind of what you'd expect from him. Actually bringing out the Reuniclus. Keeps bringing that Glalie, though. He's got good faith in it. He's actually Shadow Ball Suicune. Take out Tank the Thunderbolt at the same time. So good for Gamer. Seems some good things going for him. But let's take a look at this. I actually expected Manetric to make an appearance. And it turns out it's not. But Salazzle also being a good Pokemon that can kind of put pressure on the team if set up well enough. We do see a knockoff come from that uh, Tangrowth. It really leftovers. Takes up an Ice Beam. This is actually a special attacking... Suicune. But it's not going to be good enough as he gets Giga Drain here. Could could switch out, try and tank it with something like Reuniclus. Uh, would have to worry about actually the Shadow Ball, so maybe going to mm, Glalie? Could go to Glalie, outspeed, and kill with, like, Return. Go for the Mega and kill him off with the, with the uh, what's it called? Glaciate? What's the, uh, Fridge, fr uh, Fridge, uh, Fridge, Refrigerator, Refrigerator, yeah. Goes into the Glalie, takes up the Shadow Ball. But he's gonna go. He can just go for the refrigerate. There we go. It's a refrigerate ability, and just go for the return. Just put pressure down for him not to switch into anything. But that's exactly what he's gonna do. Exactly standard play for Ivan. And believe it or not, this thing actually is good against the Sun Stunfisk and the Salamence. It's gonna have to be the Hypno. It's gonna take an earthquake, but I don't think you want to risk it because we have seen him run Iron Head on this Registeel before. And knowing that Glalie's been on Ivan's team for the past two series. He could easily do it, but do you see the taunt come through? This could be the time for him to go for it. He has to go for Flash Cannon, but barely misses the kill. Iron Head would have done the same out since both his attack and special attack are 75 apiece. As you now see Salazzle switching in, knowing that we have seen this extra fourth attacking move on top of the uh, Seismic Toss put on this thing. We even saw frickin' Thunder Punch put on it for the Alaskan Araquanids. As Will O Wisp. being the choice of move here to go against the Salamence, well played by Wellington. Bringing his own little taste here as now Rhydon could come in and say, lol, your moves suck. Unless he's mixed, we could see Hydro Pump still flying out of this. But for now, Rhydon feeling safe and secure just spam Ice or spam uh, Stone Edge, but instead throws out the stealthier version and goes for the Stealth Rocks to be able to handle it. How you doing, Nish? Good to see you, man. Will-O-Wisp Salazzle. Very interesting. He could still be dual stab set up with the Nasty Plot in the back just there to literally cripple. Very similar to how a Talon Flame can be run. Offensive, that type of thing. But we do actually exchange Toxic and exchange do a lot of damage on this Registeel. Still like in Ivan's position right now. Still has a Tangrowth to be that physical, that physical blocker. And because we have that Salamence being burned, excuse me, he's still feeling safe. He has another physical de defender. Still has the Reuniclus as well. Which I actually predicted. I honestly thought Manetra would come out here and try and handle most of the Pokemon. I guess with Stun Fisk, he has opted against it. But... No Halucha and no Slurpuff, which is what I thought would be maybe the better chances for the Suicunes to maybe try and get a little bit of a mini sweep going off here and there, just getting a couple of Pokemon taken out here and there, and then clean up with the rest of his pokes. But instead, we opt to see the uh, the Suicune become more offensive. We saw the Entei taken out instantly. The Ice Punch is coming through with the Attack Drop with the Intimidate, though. We also see Defog come out of the Salamence, so it's going to get rid of the rocks in exchange basically have a near-useless Salamence. Does have to be careful here, so this is a more defensive build for Salamence, but Reuniclus can come in and start setting up a Nasty Plot or a Combine, whatever he wants to do. It could also be that Trick Room that comes in and just starts doing a bunch of damage. Could be carrying the Focus Blast, Psy Shock, anything like that, but we do see Slenderman coming in, the Hypno specifically to take the hits from a Reuniclus. I like this from the Suicunes, oddly enough. <laughs> Hypno will actually be able to take a lot of the hits because of its Psy Shock. We do have them. that's pretty, uh, pretty... Bulky on the physical side for Hypno, but he actually ends up going for Z-Hypnosis. Gives him a speed boost as well as a 100% accurate sleep move. So it's a one-time use, but definitely is going to put a hamper down on this guy. Now, what is he going to answer that? <laughs> Pulls a world leader as he's just going to go for a Thunder Punch do absolutely nothing. If he's not going to do anything with the sleep, the Z-Move is going to be basically useless. Gives him a plus one speed. Ivan doesn't care. He just keeps going for Calm Minds at this point because he knows the Salamence is down. Red Steel's not going to do any damage. Stunfist can't do any damage. This is just a straight-up sweep for Ivan if he opts to go for the setup. Instead, opts to go for the Shadow Ball. I think he just sits in here keeps going for it. If he gets put to sleep, doesn't matter. Calm Minds for days and basically wins. There's nothing to kill this. Entei, the only physical, like, real physical attacker that could have been left. He's down to no power. Hypnosis missed twice as Shadow Ball's giving enough to take down the Hypno. And that's all she wrote. Nothing to kill this thing. I'd be very surprised if Stumpfist could take this thing on. It is a plus two. It is a Registeel with Flash Cannon, not Iron Head. That's going to be GG. Ivan showing up. Showing both sides. Showing different techs. But Ivan having the better ones, unfortunately. There was no 
There was not even a hint that there is the seismic toss on the Hypno, which would have been his decent chance, but then you have Recover on Reuniclus. If he opted to bring I don't know if he brought three moves, but he might have had just had the recover on it. Might not even show. Of course, Mitchy is trolling. I mean Z hypnosis is one thing. Hypnosis is not the worst thing. Ivan's gotta know. Doing his damage calcs. But yeah, unfortunately for the for the Suicunes though, they didn't bring enough physical attackers that could last until the end of the match. The Willow was really hampering. And th besides, that's not even like a giant necessary. Oh, he does get the Toxic on, but it's still not gonna matter. Oh, does it still keep the low accuracy? Seriously? Oh, I thought it. I thought it upped it. Interesting. Okay, that sucks. And if it was 100% accurate, that's one thing. But even then, I still wouldn't use the hypnosis personally. But obviously, Gamer had a different idea. In mind, but I, I still like the Thunder Wave. I think it got Wish in Gen 3. I don't know if it can use it now, but I still like the Thunder Wave. Size Sauce, if I had to use Hypno. It could even be a dual screener, I think, that sort of thing. But that's my opinion. Obviously, Gamer had a different idea in mind. I We think differently. Welcome to Pokemon. Pokemon doesn't even make sense. Flash Cannon's going to come through. He's just going to set himself up to plus six. Ensure that it, every hit is a deadly hip. Deadly hit. But I think it's definitely going to come down to now that he knows that Salazzle has Will-O-Wisp, he's going to play a lot differently around if he tries to keep that in. Plus it was Defog with the likes of Roost and Earthquake, so it wouldn't be DD, which means that he has even less physical attackers on his team currently. I think he has to make a switch in his roster to bring out a little bit more offense, because as much as Ivan has a super defensive core, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him in terms of trying to set up somebody, he's going to win that war. He's got the bulkier pokes. He's got the bulkier defense that can break, break through, which is very, very similar to what Mitchie has, where he just takes up a hit and then delivers a hard one back. We're going to have to see in Game 2 if he can make a slight change to his team, because at this point, this is all she wrote. That's doing nothing as Psyshock does everything, and it is your boy Stunfisk versus the world. It's not looking good for the Pancake Fish, but let's see what it's going to be bringing out. Maybe even hides the move set for the second match. T-Bowl comes through, does nothing, as that's going to be game number one going over to W. Wellington. Well, GG. There's a time for me to go well played. That would have been good, but... Insert famous well joke. Is it over for Gamer? It is most certainly not. I think he could still do something with his team, but I do think he needs to bring out a lot more offense. So let's take a look at his roster and see if he can actually do anything with it. That really isn't going to help him too, too much. Because if he sees this, I like the Diggersby to an extent because it still outspeeds. If you look at the side of what Ivan brought, he actually brought a fair amount of slow Pokemon. Didn't bring the Metric like I expected, uh, but he did end up bringing out... That Salazzle and everything else, but he might have Pokemon that might just, depending on what builds he's put on them, he might just be able to put a lot of offensive pressure back. So I think he has to play the same game that Ivan's playing, because at this point, Ivan has the upper hand in a stall war when you're just going to try and set up and sweep. So, and this is something that we wanted to see, because both teams have been doing it fairly decently, but this one just came down to draft, doesn't have an answer, especially losing... The Entei that quickly, or E-Speed just not doing it against the Starmie. A better lead, of course, having that Entei open might help a little bit, because Sacred Fire could do a fair amount. But at the same time, again, it can't take a hit back from their Uniclus necessarily. So. He's already mentioned that Hypno was a thing on his team, but, like, what can the Sarah... I think more offense is needed? His... I mean... <sighs> I still think Halucha and Slurpuff need to make an appearance. I think Halucha has a fantastic matchup here. High jump kick on the Rhydon, acrobatics or sky attack on both the Mantine and the Tangrowth. That's the defensive core managed. If it has the, if it has the, uh, what's it called? The, if it, <laughs> what the hell was that? If it has the setup, it can basically just do a bunch of damage to any of his offensive Pokemon, especially with Unburden. It outspeeds everything and kills it. And seeing Ivan's team, it's also weak to Hyper Carries. Halucha can be that Hyper Carry if set up appropriately. But I don't know what he's brought. And with that Salmats not being in the equation and Entei being shut down, your physical attackers you're looking at right now, because of getting rid of Clink Clang, which could have even set up as a physical attacker, not a great one, but it's something, are Letheon, Diggersby, and Halucha. He's left with that, in which case you take the Halucha, right? 
even Slowpuff can do it, but he's got if he has these two hyper aggressives, he can set it up. Halucha does the some job, and then Slurpuff comes in and finishes the job. It gets return as well as the play rough. I think you just go straight out aggressive here. And if that handles it, he basically could take the game from there. So now it's up to. Uh, no, you didn't. I don't see it. There it is. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to try and time this out. You guys ready for this? We already heard this song. Go to something else. There we go. Let's get into game number two. Sarasota Suicune's looking to take their match against W. Wellington. They're going to instantly lead off with the Salamence versus the Rhydon. The Rhydon is going to take a nice, decent tickling from that earthquake. The Stealth Rock is going to be set up. We go to game number two, or turn number two here. Let's take a look at the teams. Nothing changed on the side of W. Wellington. We do actually see the Azelf and the Halucha and the Diggersby and the Moltres. Basically saying, you want damage, noob, I got damage. Moltres is also another thing that I did consider. The only thing that I was concerned with, if he's running HP Grass, it'd be good against the Rhydon. But Starmie could just basically take all the hits and just deliver the blow back. Very similar to what happened to the Entei. So he's going to have to play it a little bit differently this time. The Earthquake can keep going on the Rhydon. It's good because he's not going to be able to take the damage. Rock Blast actually being used against the Salamence. But with the attack drop, that's not too bad, actually. Gamer getting his way in here. You know, it's a mutual accidental, right? It's a mutual accident, just saying, gamer. <laughs> the Earthquake's gonna come through on the Glalie. The Glalie can start going to work. Actually, the Glalie has a slightly more easier time now, because Return with Refrigerate does a lot more damage to more of this team, considering he doesn't have to worry about uh, anything but really the Registeel. I'm trying to think in the last game if it had a harder time. Not really, it could have still went for Earthquake, but yeah, Registeel still being there, but he could basically threaten with the return. And I don't think you play around if you're Ivan right now, because you know that you're still safe. Even though your Rhydon's taking a bunch of damage, yeah, you take this Registeel, you still go for the return, just to show that you were gonna go for the standard play. You could make the huge prediction and go for Earthquake, because it's clear that Registeel's coming in, but even then, if you want to make a play of that, you might as well switch into Salazzle instead, to instantly put pressure on this. Opts to just take a tiny bit of damage on the Salazzle. If Ivan could do damage right now, well, the problem, Suwako, is it's uh, Acrolance. It's bugging out my game, so unfortunately I have to keep it like this. Either way, the Salamence is going to come in now as the Flamethrower actually comes through. It's going to be enough with a two-shot. Also shows Life Orb. We didn't see it, I don't think, attack last game. So we now know that's Life Orb, so it's going to be doing a fair amount of boosted damage. What I'll do um, next week is I'll test with with uh, inter Microsoft Edge. I don't like Edge, but if it's going to allow me to use 3D, bu uh, 3D models, I'll do it on that, basically. Not my favorite, but either way. Azelf is going to come in. Because this Flamethrower Sludge Wave could do uh, slightly more, I think. But Azelf will not outspeed. He's going to be taken. Oh, it's dead. Never mind. He's just going to one-shot it. Not even... I mean, if it was Focus Sash, it was already broken. Diggersby is going to try and come in. Quick attack with Choice Band may kill from there. Doesn't matter. He's going to have to go for the Will-O-Wisp. Because the Earthquake is going to come through and kill him off. But the Diggersby is crippled. Which means now, this thing's going to be doing nothing to the rest of his team. So I can even go into, if you wanted to, could go into the Glalie and start putting pressure again with the Refrigerate Return. He's actually just going to opt to go into the Starmie instead. Knows that he could maybe take a better hit with it. I think it is slightly bulkier than the uh, Glalie. So the Registeel is going to come in. I don't know if this is necessarily going to do it, as it is actually Scald, not Hydro Pump. But does get the burn on the Registeel. Luckily, he's got Flash Cannon, not Iron Head. But... It does mean that now this thing doesn't even have leftovers anymore, so. Still looking bleak for the side of the Suicunes as Hydro Vortex comes through, does nothing. We've seen this before from Ivan where he uses Z moves that just don't actually mean anything, except for that mana feed back in Season 3. But even then, it's still not getting much value. It just speeds us up this process slightly, but even then, it could be for something else where he takes a hit on the Halucha, for example, and one shots it. He just wants to speed up the process taking this thing down. That Protect is going to do next to nothing as most likely we're going to see um, Natural Cure on the Starmie. So the Tox is going to be gone. The damage is going to be next to nothing. Ivan is still playing into it though. Letting his Starmie take a bunch of damage. Could be a problem in the future here if Acrobatics or uh, Sky Attack comes through. He's going to make the switch to the Reuniclus now. Maybe try and get the same switch going off here. I don't know if Sweet Coons wanted to necessarily let him have that free switch. 
Because once again, he's in that same spot where Halucha is going to have to come in, go for the Sky Attack. Probably can't kill Reuniclus from that range and will be one shot from a Psy Shock. And now it's almost guaranteed it's going to be one shot. This, this is not going to do it. He's just going to lose here. Goes for the taunt. It doesn't matter. He goes for Psy Shock and there goes his last attacker. <laughs> That's it. It's game. Well, it's a take of the 2-0. He can't blast through this uh, Reuniclus. Diggersby could try. I don't know, though. It's burnt. And the fact that he let this thing get burnt, even though he knew he was going to be outsped by the likes of Salazzle, I think is going to be the end for him. Knockoff comes through. Gets rid of the leftovers. Doesn't matter. This thing's going to be doing nothing, and that's it. Unfortunate. We thought that this guy was going to be the upcoming uh, Ivan. He's just not going to take down Ivan himself. Shame. Moltres would have to get a really huge... It'd have to be like a Choice Specs crit Moltres at this point. Ooh! Ivan making a slight mistake here. Going for Shadow Ball? That's weird. This, he has no reason to even go for Shadow Ball. Well, he can go for Recover, yes. But he had no reason to go for Shadow Ball considering is going to be his strongest move against everything, including even the... Like, it doesn't matter what ends up happening with that Registeel. As we see Gunk Shot come out. I didn't know this thing got Gunk Shot. Gunkshot diggers be interesting. Well, Moltres comes in. Speakoons put up their last fight, but unfortunately they are not going to be the sought-out dog. Look at that damage, though. He could have actually done it if he had gone for the sky attack instead of the taunt. And that's it, though, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be the Suicunes falling further down the ladder. As Ivan is just going to say, I could do better than Mitch and look even healthier than his bench. That is going to be GG. Well played by the likes of W. Wellington. Once he finally decides to attack. getting there we're really getting there i haven't having a problem deciding which move is going to be finishing him off <laughs> sweet goons hurry up let's go it's over man and that is going to be the end right there ladies and gentlemen 2-0 going to w wellington i thought he finished pause Dramatic pause. Silence to fill the room. Wait for it. Wait for it. The tension is actually making my legs riot as the pain writhes through my kneecap into the crevice of my thighs. We just wait for the final blow. Don't make me make your dad make the move, man. <laughs> I know he's in the same house as you. <laughs> I'll make your dad click the move if I have to. <laughs> for the insane, I'm waiting for the insane wretches to come back. <laughs> Watch all these plus six max HP crits coming out from Flash Cannon Registeel. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. He actually is. <laughs> Ends up going for the protect halfway through. As I will maintain the silence to make it awkward for everybody. Actually just equally BMing Ivan at this point. Interesting. He's actually hitting two protects at this point. They do have a timer on uh, Acrolance, believe it or not. The timer is not ticking down nearly fast enough, nor can I adjust that. Might as well try it. Fails it this time. There we go. 
2-0 oh for Love You Wellington. <laughs> and unfortunately, and I have to, I have to harken back to it. Not to, it's not meant to insult uh, the Sweet Coons in any way, but the first loss came off of a misplay. It's similar here. We see another misplay around W. Wellington, right? The, not about the Shadow Ball, but the fact he went for the taunt and not the attack. Seeing how much damage that that Moltres actually did was a big deal. And as a result of not being able to do that damage, he is just going to end up giving up the 2-0. Which is a shame because it actually looked really good at first because we... I mean, I didn't expect to do that much damage. It was only plus one Reuniclus. But the fact that he actually still got that going for him, it meant a big deal, right? So... Unfortunately for him, but it's not going to affect him too, too much. Still sits at the top with 7 points. Still looking better than most of the people in terms of points. It just means that Ivan is now going to officially hold sole possession of first place. And it's not looking any easier for the Sarasota Suicunes to hold top 3. Because next week they're against Pichu Warriors. you got to hope for another try, attempt at BM. And then Gamer just comes through and sweeps him down another point. But, yeah. Just, just an unfortunate turn of events there for the likes of of the Sarasota Suicunes, but once again, we have to compliment W. Wellington. Staying, believe it or not, he's like the one I'm guessing the most in terms of Pokemon that he's going to bring. Other than the Minetric, I was right about the Reuniclus, I was also right about the Salazzle. Um, and you know, I, I do expect that Wellington was going to win this just based off of play. N maybe I expected a little bit more of a stop from Ivan, which then gives credit to Great Gamer, absolutely. Um, however... It's it's an Azumarill situation. Once that Reuniclus was set up again, I don't. I honestly have to. If I have to think about something, it was the Salamence. I really think that it had the potential to go DD or even Choice Band if you want to do something like that, right? DD could have done a lot of damage to the side of Ivan, and again, that Halucha plus Slurpuff combination could have just done a bunch of damage, right? We saw the Halucha come out at the time, a little bit less than it needed to, but opts to go for the Taunt. But next time, I mean, if Sarasota Suicunes end up in the playoffs and up against Ivan, he now knows the damage calcs to do against that Reuniclus and knows how much that Moltres can actually put pressure down. So, this is pretty good information for the Sarasota Suicunes. That's very true, Ivan. He does have the Ice Shard on the Glalie. Fair enough. Which sometimes you don't hear about. Sometimes people go, um... Actually, now, because you don't have to... You can run, like, Spikes, Explosion, Double Edge on top of Return, stuff like that. But yeah, Ice Shard keeps it in check. Or even Freeze Dry. I know some people bring Freeze Dry, but against the likes of Sweet Coons. Unless you're worried about that Sweet Coon, which you're not, because you have Manetric, uh, you'd be perfectly fine. So... <laughs> Either way, though, that is going to be the 2-0 going over to W. Wellington. I'm looking at the chat... I am not seeing Doodle here. Let's just double check one more time, see if Doodle is showing up for today. Checking. <sighs> Unfortunately, I mean, I could just assume that Doodle was stuck at work, but the thing is, he's also not telling me that he was going to be stuck at work. So, due to the fact that he has no information coming in, I am going to give a 2 0 over to Project. The other one was planned out. We were ready for this, so. 2 0 is going to go free to the Okeechobee Taurus, which he's going to be happy about because that gives him even more points when he's sitting already at 4th or 5th place. So. This match will be postponed until uh, next week, as has already been determined. So let's take a look at the rankings then at the end of the night. Yeah, not yet, Ivan. I'm waiting to see it, though. Why did it suddenly do this? There we go. 
Well, ranking is at the end of the day. After all of these matches, minus the uh, the uh, sock powered sky sharks and the Atlanta Kila Conquerors, W Wellington holding first place with 12 points. Peach Warriors now in second, still sitting pretty tall with 10 points. Sarasota Suicune staying at that seven points, still holding the third seed though. Alaska Alaskan Araquin, despite that 0-2 against him tonight due to forfeit is actually still at six points in fourth. Okichobi Toros with a nice three points going up, tying the Boston Bear Ticks for five points apiece. Stockton Thunderous now looking to be a little bit more contender for that top six with the four points. Stock Powered Sky Sharks uh, and Lana Keel Conquers yet to show what their results are going to be and the Cuba Destroyers sitting in a tie for eighth with that one point. Nonetheless, though, it is still very volatile. Anyone can take at least the top... Um, third through sixth seed at this point the only two who i can really see shoot up and maybe go through if we take a look at who um what's it called here the sarasota suicunes have a chance to take down the Pichu warriors if so they do have a chance to take top two in terms of the alaskan araquanids because basically you would have to assume that other players have to take them down while you're getting two O's. So if you look at the Alaskan Araquinas, does he have control over his own fate? He does. He can next week take down Wellington potentially and then fights the Pichu Warriors. So if they're looking to take down the top two, next couple of weeks is both Doodle and Gamer's opportunity to do so. Otherwise, they're going to have to rely on other people. I don't, I don't know about you, but I like to be the determinant of my own destiny most times. But with that, let's take a look. No, he wouldn't. Let's take a look at the week five rounds to see what's going to be happening. We will have a redo of the Sock Powered Sky Sharks versus Atlanta Kilo Conquerors. We'll try and get that one done first. But then we will have the Boston Bear Ticks versus the Stockton Thunderous, followed up by the Peach Warriors versus the Sarasota Suicunes, then W. Wellington versus Alaska and Araquanids, Atlanta Kilo Conquerors versus the Okeechobee Toros, and the Sock Powered Sky Sharks versus QB Destroyers. So just be known, guys, that even if you are watching the if you're watching Oxum and Icy battling next week, you will have your battle. They will be work they will be doing two battles each next week, provided that. Um, everything goes smoothly. Next week, if we do not see Oxum or her sub, or Icy or a sub come through, it will result in a forfeit going into the to the side of who can make it. So, we do not give more than one week grace, because then it just gets too messy and too much for me to organize and stuff like that. That will be next Wednesday, March 28th at 8pm Eastern Time. And just as a final note before we close off tonight, Noob's Notes and everything else will hopefully organize by the weekend. However, I am going for my fitness certification course this weekend, and as a result, there will be no stream at tomorrow, Friday, or Saturday, March 22nd to March 21st, uh, 4th. Uh, March 27th, I think I've actually said it's a Tuesday. That is when I'm going in for my biopsy for my legs. So if you'd like to wish me luck, I'm hoping it'll go great. They're going to they're gonna use that as the ultimate determinant of what's going on with my legs. But that Tuesday, we will have no stream. I'm also considering closing down the night stream for the 26th, just to make sure that I am super relaxed for that. And we are also taking off March 31st for Good Friday and Easter weekend. Ah, sorry, that's not Good Friday. That's a Saturday. We are taking that off for Easter weekend. I am out of town. So... Keep that all in mind, ladies and gentlemen. There will be, unfortunately, a lot of days. We also have a few days in April that I have to take off. It is going to be not scarce or bare bones, but there will be a lot less streams coming up in the next few weeks. Hopefully, that will normalize by the time we get into the summertime. Or, hell, if I start getting a job in the gym and I start feeling better, we might have to move back. But, I mean, you know what? The teams always change, or the times always change, but I'm glad you guys still make it out for the Pro Pokeball, as well as every other piece of content that I do. You really are the most special people to me in terms of my career probably forever <laughs> so thank you very much for making this super awesome we'll see you next wednesday for the pro pokeball if not next stream will be next monday maybe sunday depending on how i'm feeling after my certification course but most likely assume next monday march 26th 11 a.m eastern time we'll see you then until then guys this has been the pro pokeball week four good luck to all of our participants see you in week five